today we're going to take a look at how to make an AI respond to sounds in a game. So for example, if you have an explosion, he'll be alerted by the explosion. If you throw a rock, he'll be alerted and he'll go over to the rock. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So the assets we're using are just the standard assets from Unity. And then I'm using some sounds from freesounds.org. I'll send you the link to both of those. And the reaction that I've got on my guy is from Mixamo. I'll give you the um, animator controller, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain to you guys how to set up an animator for this. I'm trying to keep videos modular and make sure that this is just a video about how to make the AI respond to sounds. Let's start off with the things, the classes, the interfaces that we're going to need to implement this system. We're going to need sound. And I don't mean the audio clips that we're going to be playing. I'm saying a sound which has a position from which it was generated, a volume or intensity that is the range about which the sound was generated that the AI can hear it, and then types of sound. So for example, if a gunshot or an explosion happens, your AI will react differently than if it's a rustling in the bushes or the impact of a rock. So one of the first things you can do, and this is always a good idea when you're creating a new system, is create a folder for all of these files. I've already got all this stuff set up, and you guys don't have to worry about creating any of this if you don't want to. You can just get it from my GitHub. But if you want to do this uh, as we go along, you can create a new c -sharp script called sound. So just create c -sharp script, and we'll take a look at what that sound file is. Let's take a look at this line by line. We have the Unity engine. We're using the Unity engine because we have a Vector3 that's part of the Unity engine. This is in its own separate namespace. The namespace gameplay could just as well be called namespace uh, NPCs or something like that. This sound class is not inherent from anything. It's not even an object. It's just a sound. It's got a read-only Vector3 position and a read-only float which is um, the range, the intensity, or the volume of the sound, which is how far away from the, the origination position an AI can hear the sound, okay? We have to have a constructor with these read-only values. So on the constructor, whenever we generate a sound, we push those uh, that position and that range into the sound class. Once we have no more references to the sound class, it gets destroyed, its memory gets destroyed, by the garbage collector. So before we test out our sound, we're gonna want something that will generate a sound. So let's go ahead and create a new class called the test sound maker. Again, this is on GitHub, so you don't have to copy this if you don't want to. We're gonna put an audio source on it and we're gonna put a range on it. That range is the intensity of the sound and that's what we're gonna set our sounds range to. So we're gonna use Unity's built-in on mouse down uh, function from mono behavior and that means if your object has a collider and you click on that collider or that object um, it's going to do whatever's within this method so what I'm going to say is if my source is playing that is if I'm already playing a sound from that sound source I'm just going to exit the method otherwise I'm going to play a sound and then generate a sound and that sound if you remember has a position and a range. So we pass in our object's position and the sound range that we've put up here in the line nine. Now in this scene, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new 3D object, call it a cube, and I'm going to give it an audio source. And now I'm going to put that test sound maker that we just added in here, and I'm going to put the audio source into its audio source field, and I'm just going to leave that sound range at around 25. I'm actually going to put a audio clip and audio clip onto here, and I'm just going to choose whatever's in here. It doesn't really matter. I've got a foghorn, and we can listen to that right now. Perfect. So whenever I click on this cube, it should play that uh, audio source and then it will do whatever is inside of the on mouse down. It'll create a new sound and that, uh, oops, this is going ahead a little bit. Okay, so it's gonna play that sound that we have on the audio source and then it's going to create a sound with this uh, position and range. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and print the uh, sounds data okay sound let's say with uh with pose 
uh, sound.pose uh, and range sound.range created. All right, let's press save and go back into our game. Let's go ahead and press play, and then we're going to click on the cube, and what we should see in the console. Oops. Right, okay, so that played on awake. We don't want that. We're going to unclick, untick play on awake in the audio source. So let's go ahead and click on our cube. It plays, and we can see in the console that a sound at this object's position was created with a range of 25. Perfect. Now we need something that's going to actually listen for those sounds. So what we want to do is create an interface because this is going to be a lot more versatile than if we created a base class from which all of our NPCs would inherit. So I'm creating this new interface called the I hear and I'm going to give it one method which is respond to sound and I pass in a reference to the sound which it's going to respond to. So what I can do with this is implement it in different classes. So for example, if I create a an MPC class, I would inherit from I here and then on that class itself, I would create the functionality for respond to sound because for example, an animal might respond differently than a soldier. And you might say, well, why not use a an abstract class? Well, because then I would have to inherit from that class as opposed to just simply implementing the I here interface. On a class I can inherit, I, I can implement as many interfaces as I want. However, if I want to implement a class, if I want to inherit from a class, I have to have a class hierarchy and it gets a little bit more complicated. We have sounds and we have an interface that will respond to those sounds, but we need to have an actual object that's going to respond, an actual object with functionality. Now we have to create a class and we're going to call this class the functional adult it's going to be a mono behavior and it's going to implement the i here interface that we've just created now because it's implementing that interface we must use that respond to sound method it's going to be a public void and it has to have the same exact signature as as the uh, respond to sound method on i here so here you can see that now within that method we're going to create all of our functionality the first thing I'm going to do is just write to the console that I've responded to a sound. I'm just going to write down, I'm going to print a message that I'm responding to a sound. Now I'm going to go ahead and go in and delete my character that I had before in the preview. I'm going to go ahead and go into the Unity Standard Assets. I'm going into the Characters folder, the Third Person folder, and the Prefabs. I'm going to grab the AI Person Controller and I'm going to put the functional adult script on here and I'm going to make sure that I have no functionality yet. I want to make sure that I'm on the same page as you guys. So I'm deleting everything and all I want to do when I'm responding to a sound is print a message. I'm going to actually use this guy's name and I'm going to say responding to sound. And I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put in the position of the sound. I'm going to respond to the sound at the sound's position. Okay. This isn't going to work, but I want to make sure that I have all of this set up and that you guys are on the same page as me. Okay, good. Now, we need to talk about how to make the sound work. So let's say, for example, if I click on that box, nothing should happen except for the print. Right, It prints a message. Now what I want to do is actually create like a sound wave and propagate that signal to our functional adult. So the way that I'm going to do that is by creating a new class. This class is going to be the last one that we need for this tutorial. This is going to be the sounds class. I'm putting this into the gameplay namespace. I'm using the Unity Engine namespace because I'm using some built-in Unity functions. Sounds is a static class. Now, you've probably heard people say, oh, never use static stuff, oh my goodness. But a lot of the stuff that Unity uses is static. So, for example, physics is static. Time is static. A lot of things are static, and it's not a big deal. We're not changing static variables. We're just using static methods. So, what I want to do is whenever I make a sound, I'm going to call this make sound function on the sounds class. I'm going to pass in a reference to the sound that I'm making. And I'm going to check for colliders around the sound's position 
within the sound's range. Now for every collider there, if I've hit a collider that has that I hear interface that we created before, we're going to call the respond to sound method on that interface. Simple as that. In order to implement that sounds class, we're going to go into our cube and we're going to open the test sound maker. And once we've made a sound, we're going to call the sounds class and we're going to make a sound and we're going to pass in the sound that we just made. And I think that should work in order to call the respond to sound method on Ethan. It did. So AI third person controller, which is Ethan right here, is responding to sound at the box's position. I'm going to move the box so that we get a little bit of a different um, call there in the in the uh, in the console, and I'm going to change Ethan's name to Ethan so that we know that things are working here. I'm going to go back into the game, and there we go. Ethan sound, responding to sound at the box's new position, etc. So. That's working fine. Now we would just have to put functionality onto Ethan so that he does cool things. For the sake of simplicity, and again, for the sake of modularity, we're only gonna do two things if Ethan hears a sound. We're gonna make a quick cha change to sounds right now. So I'm gonna go into sound, and I'm going to add an enum uh, sound type, okay? And I'm going to say that I, I also want to have a default. So I'm going to put in default and I'm just going to set that equal to negative one. Don't worry about that. And then I'm going to have interesting and danger. Okay. So uh, I'm going to leave this public and I'm not going to set that because, well, you'll see. Okay. So in order to make Ethan go to a sound or go away from a sound, I need to use a, I'm going to use a, a nav mesh agent. Okay, so I'm on Ethan's functional adult script. I'm using the Unity um, engine AI namespace, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a nav mesh agent, call it agent and set it to null. And on the awake function, I'm gonna check if Ethan has an agent. And I'm going to say, if we don't have an agent on Ethan, I'm going to pass out the agent. I'm going to say that um, Ethan doesn't have an agent. Debug.log warning. Ethan does. Uh, let's just say name. Name doesn't have an agent. Okay. Otherwise, the agent will be set in this. Um, line right here okay now when we respond to a sound we want to say that if a sound is of type uh, let's call it interesting we're gonna to go towards the sound so let's say let's create a new method called move to we're gonna pass in a vector 3 position and we're gonna set the agents destination to the position and we're going to say that the agent is no longer stopped if it were stopped. Is stopped equals false. Perfect. Okay. So if, all right, here we go. If the sound is interesting, Ethan is going to move to the sound's position. Else, Ethan's going to run away from it because it's dangerous, right? We could say else if sound dot sound type equals sound type dot danger but because we only have two things well really okay this is actually a pretty good method because we have that invalid so what we want to say is we're going to move away from the sound now how do we do that we need to get a direction to the sound so that's a vector three direction equals sound position minus our position that is ethan's position okay and we are going to go in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to say is move to transform dot position. Um, let's say, do we have back? No, we have forward. We could go negative forward. Let's actually try transform forward minus direction. And that should just get us away um, behind us. Okay. So 
let's try that and see if it works. So first we need to put a nav mesh agent onto Ethan. I think he already has one. He does. So let's grab that nav mesh agent, put it onto the functional adult, and then we're going to need to make sure that we set the sound type. So I actually have this throwable class. Um, I'm going to throw a rock and don't worry about this again. You guys will have this in the GitHub file. Okay. When I create this sound, I'm going to reference the sounds type and set the sound type to interesting for when the rock collides with the ground. Okay. And on the test sound maker, I'm going to say that the sound that we're making is dangerous. So I want to run away. So sound type equals sound type danger. Okay. Okay, so let's see what happens. Hopefully this works. We'll see if I'm going to go ahead and throw a rock to start. Okay, so Ethan goes to the rock. Let's throw. Actually, uh, that didn't work quite as well as I expected it to. So let's throw Ethan a rock again and click that box. So he's running away, but he's not running away in the way that um, I would hope he would. So let's try something a little bit different. We're actually going to go back to Ethan's functional adult script and we're going to normalize this direction. Dot normalized. Okay. So what I want to say is I want to go in a, I want to, I want to maintain my position and I want to go in a, in a minus my direction, minus the direction to the, um, to the sound times some kind of distance. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go 10 meters away from my current position in the opposite direction of the sound. That's what this is saying right here. All right. So let's, let's try that and see if it works. Let's see if it works. I'm just going to click this. There it goes. Okay. So he's just running away 10 meters from his current position. I don't know if he's out of range of the sound now. He's not. Okay. So let's try it again. So that's working. Let's just make sure that we're not good. Okay, so he's now out of range of the sound. Okay. And what I want to do one more time just to make sure that this is really working is I want to make him go in the opposite direction. So he's facing the cube now and I want him to turn around and go the opposite direction. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Okay. So this gives you guys an idea of what you can do. You can, in this respond to sound method, you can do animations, you can do uh, things with the UI. So for example, in the preview, you saw that I had the exclamation pop up, uh, mark pop up. You said, uh, you heard the uh, medical, Metal Gear Solid inspired sound, things like that. This hopefully gives you an idea of what you can do to make your AI, your NPCs respond to sound in your games. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. You guys are fucking beautiful. See you next time.